It is Thursday Night Football, and the Denver Broncos get ready to take on the Cleveland Browns. We go through the injury report, questionable statuses, not to mention players to watch, and keys to victory. Sarah Benninger, myself, we break it down on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Make sure you follow, subscribe on your favorite podcasting provider, subscribe, and turn on notifications here on YouTube so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. And thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen every single day. Sarah, my friend, look, it is essentially game day here for both you and myself. Obviously, we're going to have Broncos fans covered with a post-game report immediately after Thursday night's matchup against the Cleveland Browns. But look, the table is set. This is it. The preparation is done. Now the Broncos are in the part where they're traveling to Cleveland, and now it's time to take on the Browns in primetime action. How you doing, my friend? Doing well, Cody. Doing well. I think back at, I think back to some of these Thursday night primetime matchups the Broncos have had in recent years, and I just feel like there's a, there's a bit of a good mojo with those games, isn't there? I mean, at least the last few years, I think the Broncos have done better on Thursday night than, than not. So, it feels like this is an opportunity for things to kind of get back on the right track. That's, you know, with Von Miller making his comments, which we'll talk about later, really reminds me of that Arizona game a few years back where, you know, he had some select words. So there's just there's just that feeling right now where it's like things could go one of two very different directions. And, of course, this game a lot hinges on it. Yeah, it really does, too. And, you know, the Thursday night football, the last time these two teams played on Thursday night football, Sarah, was a 34-30 to victory for the Denver Broncos. Jay Cutler connecting with Eddie Royal on a 92-yard touchdown. Uh, what a game that was. That was Brady Quinn's first start. That's a long, long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. And that's really where we saw Peyton Hillis come into the emergence for the Denver Broncos as a running back because there was a fourth and one, the Broncos, they went for it. Peyton Hillis, he got it, and they had to review it, but he got it, and he was the tailback ever since. So I like going back to, uh, down memory lane a little bit. What could have been here for the Denver right. Broncos? But obviously the table is set here, Sarah. Let's take a look at the Broncos. Final injury report right now. There's still some statuses that could change. We do know Baker Mayfield out of this matchup here for the Cleveland Browns. That bodes well for the Broncos' chances and the optics of them maybe going into Cleveland and competing. Case Keenum, former Denver Bronco, will get the start. So some storylines, if that is the case there, my friend. We talked about it uh, after the Raiders game because we knew that Baker was banged up and and we Mm -hmm. were wondering what his stats would be now. Here it is, Joe Woods and Case Keenum against their former teams. Uh, That's going to be a very fun storyline. But for the Denver Broncos side of things, really the only questionable, there's two players that are really questionable for this matchup, essentially. And that's Teddy Bridgewater, who's dealing with a foot injury. He had it stepped on in Sunday's loss against the Raiders. It went numb, and he looked like he could barely walk without discomfort from the Sunday podium, not to mention even on Tuesday's practice where he was walking to the Pat Bowlin Fieldhouse. It looked rough for him, and he was non committal as to whether or not he could play. But you had... Pat Shermer, you had Vic Fanger saying, oh, I think he can play. You know, we'll, we'll have to see. But Teddy wasn't so sure. So there's something right there. I, I think he's going to be obviously the biggest question mark. Caden Stearns has been dealing with an, uh, an illness, so he is also questionable. I imagine we'll see if he makes the trip to Cleveland. Obviously, the team's set to leave late Wednesday night to get to Cleveland. But, my friend, uh, your thoughts on this? Because we got everybody else that is on the injury report. You have Garrett Bowles. He's going to play. Noah Fant's got a foot injury. He's going to play. Uh, and Justin Simmons dealing with a hand, but something to monitor it could change. He and his wife, Taryn, are expecting their second child. So if that happens, obviously, you know what? That takes precedence over everything. And I don't know why Broncos fans are getting pissed at Justin Simmons for saying, hey, look, if my wife goes into labor Wednesday, Wednesday night, and I go there, like, I'm going to I'm gonna be there for my family. Like, who wouldn't be? Would you miss the birth of your kid to go play a football game? I wouldn't. No, I and I certainly wouldn't go to work instead. So I can tell you that much, Cody. But but yeah, I mean, the, the injury report definitely presents a unique uh, type of game really I mean it's not a preseason game obviously but man you might it might give you some preseason vibes depending on who all shows up in this game we know Cleveland the extent of it doesn't end at Baker Mayfield I mean it's their starting running backs it's their starting offensive tackles it's their number one and two wide receiver it's it's all over the map they're starting center as well so it, it goes really deep for Cleveland and it kind of makes you think like okay well 
if Cleveland doesn't have this many guys playing, what's the Broncos excuse going to be if they drop this game? Like, like you and I were talking before the, before the show, like even as good as case Keenum is in terms of backup quarterbacks, man, this is an opportunity for your defense, which is mostly healthy to, to flex its muscles a little bit. And so it's an opportunity for the Broncos that they really can't miss. And you, you growing up against a team that's very beaten, very battered. If the game were being played on a Sunday, it would be interesting to know how different the, the two rosters would look. But it's being played on a Thursday. The Broncos are kind of catching a break here. They're kind of catching the, the Browns at a really favorable time in terms of just, you know, who cares at season's end? You win this game against Cleveland. Who cares what their roster really looked like at this point in time, right? So it's going to be it's gonna be fascinating. It'll be fun to see how the players come out and respond, you know, whether or not Justin Simmons' wife has a baby. It, I mean, there's so much wild and crazy at play for this game in terms of who actually will play. I'm interested to see how it all pans out. Well, two nights ago, Sarah, there was a full moon out. So everything is going crazy yeah. right now. And, and obviously yeah. everyone's kind of up in arms. But, you know, obviously keeping an eye on these injuries, really the big one is going to be with Teddy Bridgewater. Can he play? And it goes back to what Vic Fangio said about player safety. If Teddy Bridgewater is not 100% or if he's not to a point where if his foot is bothering too much, where it will impact his ability to help the offense if he plays well, right? I, I think that's a bigger question to say, hey, you got to sit him. If he knows that he mm -hmm. can't go out there and be as effective as can be. We've seen Teddy Bridgewater play some great football through the first three weeks. But if he can't contribute or play in a similar fashion to that, what's the point of throwing him out there if he's not healthy? Right. Uh, I don't like the optics of it, especially when Vic Fangio a couple weeks ago was harping on the Baltimore Ravens about player safety. In this case, I think Drew Locke is getting some preparation for it. He could end up playing. So we could see Drew Locke versus Case Keenum, which is, is wild in and of itself. Obviously, Case Keenum had that one year in Denver in 2018. They brought in Joe Flacco, but then the real story was they drafted Drew Locke in round two. So the storylines for this game, Sarah, they extend deep, my friend. And Broncos country, let us know your thoughts on the injury report. Should, in fact, Teddy Bridgewater play if he's not 100% in this game with his foot injury? And if so, what would you like to see from Drew Locke in this game? Not to mention, what are your expectations considering some of the Cleveland Browns injuries? Let Sarah and myself know in the YouTube comment section or on Twitter at Lockdown Broncos. But Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, both Sarah and myself, we're going to get into our players to watch for Thursday night football. Coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. So good friends over there, rockauto.com. And if you need anything for your vehicle, rockauto.com, they have everything that you could be looking for, whether it's an engine control module, brake parts, tail lamps, or even motor oil, or even brand new carpet for your vehicle, whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, you get everything you need all in one place, rockauto.com, where the prices are always reliably low, whether you're a professional or do it yourself, or you no longer have to spend as much as you'll get at local auto chain stores or even dealerships. Rockauto.com comes in clutch in the fourth quarter when you need it. They're catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate you can quickly see all the parts available for your car or your truck by looking at year make model you get to choose the brand specifications and even the prices that you prefer all at rockauto.com so head to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck right lockdown broncos in there how did you hear about his box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com all right, Sarah, as we get into our players to watch here on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, just want to say, hey, mile high salute to all the avid listeners all across Broncos country who continue to tune in every single day to support their team and, and get both sides of the coin here on the podcast. I just want to say thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. But Sarah, my friend, looking at this matchup Thursday night football, a short turnaround, there's a lot of storylines that we've talked about leading up to this, the injury report here. But now, you know what? Here's what we got to do. The game is here. Now we got to look at players we have our eyes on specifically in Broncos country. You always want to chime into the conversation. Let us know which players you have your eyes on in this matchup here against the Cleveland Browns. Let us know in the YouTube comment section or on Twitter at Career Work NFL at Sarah Bedinger at Lockdown Broncos. But Sarah, let's start off with you. The offensive side of the ball, taking a look around here, a lot of variables, a lot of things. That obviously, we've talked about the struggles of the offensive line. We talked about the offensive quarterback issue, the offensive coordinator issue, uh, just guys not being utilized the right way offensively. Who are you watching this week? And really, what is the expectation? Well, one area of the Cleveland Browns where they are healthy is on the defensive line. And we know that they have one of the best in the entire NFL coming off the edge. Obviously, Miles Garrett presents a huge, huge problem for anybody that he's going up against. Doesn't matter if you're the best left tackle or right tackle in the league or if you're the worst. So for me, Cody, the offensive player to watch is Bobby Massey. I think that he's got a huge opportunity ahead of him 
to go up against Miles Garrett, we think we're, we're going to see chips. We're going to see tight end, the tight end chipping. We're going to see running backs staying in to help pass protect. It's not going to be Bobby Massey on an island. I can tell you that much against no. uh, against Miles Garrett. <laughs> so we saw what Max Crosby did this past weekend. It's hard for me to really s- to, to see Miles Garrett having a worse game, but at the same time, you can scheme away from that. You know, roll roll your quarterback out, roll him away, chip, pass pro, triple team. I don't care what you do. He has eight sacks already this season, Cody Miles Garrett does, and we know that he's capable of those games that we've seen from a number of players throughout the course of the of recent Broncos history. I'll never forget Vic Beasley sacking Pax and Lynch five times in one game, and we've seen that a number of times through the years. So the Broncos have been making pro bowlers out of other teams, edge rushers for years now, Cody. So it's time for, it's time for Bobby Massey to step up. Look, he's not making huge money or anything, but he's got a big opportunity this week to really shut down miles Garrett as much as miles Garrett can be shut down. And whether they, they scheme that or they help him out somewhere or another, Bobby Massey's my player to watch on offense. I know you've got somebody who likes to, to run right behind him as your, your player to watch on offense. Yeah, you know, I think the offensive line this week is going to be very critical to the success of the Broncos' operations on the offensive side of the ball. And look, the O-line, they've had their breakdowns, but I constantly get a lot of these replies that Teddy Bridgewater, the Broncos quarterbacks are struggling because of the O-line. That's really not the case. There is a couple of breakdowns here and there that happen through, consistently throughout the game, sometimes on the interior, things that can be rectified, but it's not the re- the reason or the issue why the Broncos' offense is struggling. It's a combination of scheme and everything else. You, you mentioned Miles Garrett. You absolutely have to figure out a way to neutralize his ability to wreck your game there. But then opposite of him, I know he's questionable, but you have Jadavian Clowney as well. The Broncos saw him last year in week one against the Mm -hmm. Tennessee Titans. And then you got your former teammate that you have there, Denver Broncos, Von Miller, obviously uh, his former teammate Malik Jackson playing on the interior. Uh, You know, I think that's obviously a big element there. But, you know, I think the one benefit is no Jeremiah Usukormo has been fantastic this year for them. He's on IR. My offensive player to watch is going to be Javante Williams. And look, I I don't know, Sarah, what the Broncos emphasis is coming into this football game. But, you know, we know that everybody wants them to pass. We know that opposing defenses say, hey, you know what? Throw the football. We want you to throw the football. And when you look at that secondary, I know they've been giving up a couple of big plays the last couple of weeks, but they do have some playmakers there in Cleveland. So you have Mm -hmm. to find a way to get things going. How many Time, Sarah, do we watch a game here this season with Javante Williams? And he has one play that's just electrifying or is momentum providing. Yep. This is the week, in my opinion, the Broncos really have to just open up here, open up, run the football, run, run, run. And you know what you could do if you can get the run game going? You can actually do play action. I don't like the straight drop backs off play action. I like what you said. Roll them out, help neutralize, have a quick passing game because you can't hold on the ball as long as you do normally against these pass rushers here. So Javante Williams, I think as well, you know, you have to get him involved in the passing game and Sarah, for the love of all things that I love about football, please, Pat Shermer, if it's third and long, you know what? Don't put your your running back all the way out as the number one wide receiver and then throw the screen to him there. We, we want running back screens. We want to see that, but not that. When, it, when a blitz happy team, if you're getting pressure and they're coming up the middle and they're coming off the edge, you know what you do? When you catch them too aggressive, you pop them with a running back screen. You dump it over the top. We have yet to see that type of creativity in this offense. And so really not just uh, you know, a player to watch, coach to watch this week. going to be Pat Shermer because mm-hmm. – if all things don't go well, Sarah, as early as Friday afternoon, he could be handed his walking paper. So keep an eye on that Broncos country, according to what I've been told. So we'll see that. But that's the offensive side of the ball. Look, get, get Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon going. These two guys that are too talented of a running back duo to not be utilized in the way that they could. So it could have a big impact on this game. But now, Sarah, let's flip to the defensive side of the ball. Which defensive player do you have your eye on in this game? I'm looking right at Von Miller, Cody. I referenced earlier the the comments that he made leading up to a game against Arizona a few years back when they had Josh Rosen, who was just getting absolutely destroyed back there behind a terrible offensive line. Obviously, missing both your starting tackles, that's an opportunity for Von Miller to kind of just mess with somebody. And he said, you know, in his press conference, obviously in jest, you know, he's like, I'm going to kill whoever the right tackle is. I'm going to kill him out there. And I love that mentality from Von Miller just because we know he's he's one of the elders on this team at this point. He's he's an established superstar. He's a team captain. He's a leader. He's, he's this. He's that. He's the other. He's a future Ring of Famer, future Hall of Famer. 
He's Von Miller. He still can take over games. I don't care how old that guy gets. I feel like he's going to be able to take over games into his late 30s and early 40s. But, man, Von Miller is the player to watch in this game. you got your backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns playing. Don't care if it is Case Keenum. I wouldn't care who, who it was. It's the backup quarterback. So, Von Miller, go out there and whip that tackle and make Case Keenum wish that Baker Mayfield was playing with that torn labrum or whatever he's got going on. Make him wish – that that he he was still riding the bench wearing a hat and and helping call plays or you know doing hand signals or whatever else it is that he does that's what I think Von Miller is going to be able to do in this game Cody he's a game wrecker the the Browns simply don't have the horses in the running game to be able to get past Von Miller in that way and we know that that's how they like to run their offense they like to establish the ground game just force feed Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb and those guys make plays they don't have either of them for this game Casey Keenum's gonna have to drop back and he's going to have to pass. And Von Miller, man, if the Broncos' coverage can hold up on the back end, I think Von Miller's in for a huge game. Yeah, and I think also how, I'm eager to see how uh, Cleveland plays. Look, the last several weeks, you know what NFL teams are doing, and this is really where I think you miss a guy like Bradley Chubb, and, and we don't know what it would have been like, the impact of having him there, because he didn't have much of a sample size so far this season. But I'm seeing Von Miller. I went back on the Raiders tape. I went back on the Ravens and the Steelers. Man, he is facing tight ends. He's facing tackles. He's facing running back chips. But they're also facing quick passing offenses that are really taking him out of the game. So everybody's saying, where's Von Miller? How come Von Miller's not putting his stamp on this game? Well, it's hard to do when the ball's coming out in three seconds. It's really hard to do when you're fighting a double team from a tight end and a tackle and having to get to him in three seconds. It, it's very difficult. So that's why I always encourage people, stop looking at the box scores. Go back and watch the tape and see what these guys are dealing with. Mm-hmm. But in situations mm-hmm. like that, Sarah, that's where Malik Reed, that's where Shelby Harris, that's where Draymond Jones and Mike Purcell, these guys have to step up there and they have to find a way to get pressure. There is no interior pressure here by the Broncos defense and it's not coming off the other side and that has been a tremendously concerning aspect the last couple of weeks so something to keep an eye on there but I I like it this is Von Miller saying hey let's go you know you guys I want you know he wants to lead that locker room of young guys he wants them to follow him because look I can tell you sir uh, the Broncos locker room right now amongst you know players to coaches the, the coaching staff is losing the players that's something I've been told so you look at guys like Von Miller and Justin Simmons as a player and you're like you know what let's go let's go play for each other let's go out there and do this big big Big, big opportunity here on Thursday Night Football. But the defensively, the player I got my eye on, Justin Sternod, and you'll see I'm going to keep it simple from the standpoint that this is his game, first game of the NFL regular season where he's going to have the green sticker. How fast can he get the calls from the sideline? How can he adjust these guys? Now, he's been no stranger to making some mistakes, and that's what, everything that I expected from a guy who's playing essentially as a rookie in the NFL, having missed time and having you know two of your starters on the offensive side, of the, I mean defensive side of the ball with Josie Drew and Alexander Johnson gone. I imagine we're going to see some of the issues, some of the struggles here with Justin Sternod. But, Sarah, I tell you what, two to three years from now, it's going to pay off, and he's going to be a really good football player here for this organization. So I'm not worried about him making mistakes now, just as long as he continues to grow. I've got my eye on Justin Sternod this week. And Broncos country, let us know who your players are that you have your eye on in this matchup here in the YouTube comment section or on Twitter at Lockdown Broncos. But coming up here in just a moment, it's getting to the point where we have to get into our keys to victory. Sarah and I, we're going to share ours, our thoughts on what the Broncos need to do to come out with a win against the Cleveland Browns. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's a good friends over there, betonline.ag. We're back and we're better than ever in a brand new web interface for the start of the NBA season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Has you in line in combination with the NFL season Thursday night football. But BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. You can head to the new website and sign up today and you can get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code LOCKDOWN from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. You don't have to wait and take advantage of all the amazing offers available here for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Sarah, jumping into the fourth quarter action today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Just once again, want to shout out Broncos country. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, it means the world to both Sarah and myself and also the ability to interact with all of you on social media here on the YouTube comment section. Even if we agree or disagree, we love the perspective as long as everybody keeps it respectful. So with that said, Sarah, let's get to keys to victory here. Obviously, Thursday night football, the Broncos on the road. They're still underdogs in this game against the Cleveland Browns, according to all the, the spreads and the money lines or whatever you have there. But you know what? I'm looking at this game as a get-right opportunity here. 
First off, what is your first key to victory if the Broncos are going to go to Cleveland here on Thursday night and march out and come away with a win? Well, I think it starts with the offense, right? I mean, it starts with the offense connecting on some of these big plays in the passing game specifically that we've seen them just absolutely be they're either the receiver is not on the same page or the quarterback is throwing it too far. And mainly that's been obviously Teddy Bridgewater or not far enough, or there's just been something, some issue with the timing or what have you. There's been issues getting the ball deep for this offense. The Broncos simply haven't been able to connect on enough long passing plays and there, the opportunities have been there. I mean, how many, what ifs have we seen just in the last three weeks of passing plays that, that were there, you know, the receiver was there, the, the protection was good. And, and all it took was just connecting on the throw. And, and it's it's up to the QB. I don't know which one is going to play like we talked about earlier. Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke. Teddy Bridgewater with that foot injury. Here's my thought on that really quick, Cody. I would I would put in Drew Locke, to be honest with you. You've got, like you said, you know Vic Fangio campaigning for player health. And also Vic Fangio talked about the fact that he thought he could win with both quarterbacks. If that's the case, there's not a substantial enough difference between those two guys, at least from what we could see in training camp and preseason play, not a substantial enough difference to keep Drew Locke off the field if Teddy Bridgewater's not 100%. So especially with the way Teddy's played the last few weeks, I'd love to see Drew out there if possible to get him, get him an opportunity, get him a chance, let Teddy heal up, let him take a week off after that just horrible game that he had against the Raiders. And somebody, whoever it is, got to connect on those deep passing plays. Yeah, and I think guys like Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton, they'll be excited because they can actually attack that. You know, I think it's just all about chemistry and rhythm. And speaking of chemistry and rhythm, Sarah, look, I think that the Broncos, they have to be better offensively off script you know the scripted plays on the first drive there against the las vegas raiders it was great but once the script that you know usually about after 15 to 17 plays you get off script now and it's really just based on the ebb and flow of it I, pat Shermer and the offensive staff they had to be better off the script and that was an issue that really impacted rich scangerello when he was the offensive coordinator for the broncos so this has been an issue for the denver broncos offense it's been an issue for pat Shermer. so the leeway is probably not as much there as it used to be even last year considering all the circumstances that the nfl and many teams faced obviously with the covid situation but now this year there's no excuse now the broncos had to find a way to be better off script and for pat Shermer to sit up in the box with literally the best view in the house you should be able to see what defensive alignment some of the defensive guys are for the Cleveland Browns, the D linemen. What are they doing? Are they blitzing the inside back or are they rotating their safeties down? And if you see these things happening, obviously you have your whole entire staff up there with you for the most part, for the guys that aren't down in the field, you can have that collaboration, that communication as to what's going on and you can adjust, but we have yet to see that. So can the Broncos be better off script? That is one key to victory here for me, Sarah. Uh, and now for you, now let's get to the defensive side of the ball. What is your key to victory here for the Broncos defense against this Cleveland Browns offense? Well, I kind of alluded to it before, but it's really get after Case Keenum as quickly and as often as possible. I mean, that's that's going to be key to this game. Again, make Case Keenum wish that he wasn't playing somehow, some way. Cody, I just had this thought as you were kind of talking about Justin Sternod, his first game with the green dot, too, to add to this, this key to the game that I had for myself. I feel like, you know, an opportunity to really make those linebackers, whoever ends up playing, whether it's it's Sternod and Micah Kaiser or Curtis Robinson, Barrington Wade, whoever it is that ends up actually playing, get those guys running a lot of blitzes. You know, get them, get them doing things where they don't have to necessarily react to a bunch of different things that's happening around them. Allow those guys to play free, to play fast, to do what they do best, to kind of make one decision. You know, you would look at that from the perspective of the quarterback a lot of times. You know, when you get a young quarterback out there to have success in his first game, let's just put him in spots where he can make quick reads, you know, do these quick things, highly efficient, et cetera, et cetera. For Vic Fangio, I think the key on the other side of the ball is going to be whether or not he can put those linebackers in a great position to succeed. Send Justin Sternot on a blitz. Send Micah Kaiser blitzing. Get those guys attacking the line of scrimmage, making life difficult for Case Keenum because that's going to be the way that you win this game. Force some turnovers. Allow that secondary to eat. Don't, don't make them sit back there for five, six seconds at a time and hold coverage. Get after the quarterback. Make some plays as pass rushers. Do what do what do to the Cleveland Browns what other teams have been doing to you. <laughs> Look, the, the, the I mean, Teddy Bridgewater was hit 17 times last week. And as you mentioned, Cody, a lot of that is on him. But at the same time, the, those guys are just scheming. They're scheming things and ways to get to the quarterback and get pressure on. They're loading up the box, disguising things, this, that, and the other. Vic Fangio's got to follow suit and do the same. Yeah, absolutely. You have to adjust to the times there and obviously understanding your personnel, what you can do. And, and why not blitz a guy like Sternet who's got the range to be able to fit through a gap really tight 
Lee squeeze his shoulder and get to the QB. You have to find a way to dial those up. But even more interesting enough, right, if Odell Beckham Jr., if Jarvis Angel are out, yeah, that's a big blow for them. They still have Donovan Peoples-Jones, who's a tremendous athlete. And you also have Rashad Higgins, who's obviously a former CSU Ram. But then you have to worry about guys like David Njoku, Austin Hooper. You have to worry about those guys as well. We might see a lot of two tight end sets here from the Cleveland Browns if, in fact, that is the case. I wouldn't be shocked if that's their base offensive formation we see throughout the night with Case Keenum. But, you know, the Broncos going against probably, arguably, the NFL's best backup quarterback here. So it is a big test. No need to overlook him there, too. If you're a Broncos country fan member, I know the Case Keenum experiment in Denver didn't go as planned, but he's damn good as a backup quarterback. And I guarantee you, many people, and look, he said, even myself, I said in the offseason, could the Broncos somehow get Case Keenum as the backup quarterback this upcoming season? Uh, that was something I said last year. So don't get mad at me. I said that now. I don't believe that now, but I said it last year. So going back in hindsight, for me, you know, Sarah, I'm going to keep my defensive key to victory very simple because it is that. And it's the keep it simple, stupid method here. The Broncos, they're running a very complex scheme here, and they're trying to disguise a lot against guys with speed. And that's where guys get caught out of alignment and offenses are shifting guys moving guys around to really force the Broncos to move that second safety before the snap usually it happens pre-snap once the ball is snapped here you have your two safeties there the ball is snapped then you see a guy roll down but because offenses are picking up on that it's become a major talking point in the broadcast a lot of teams are moving guys to force them down quicker and that is exposing I think a lot of the holes in the Broncos and when the pressure is not getting home it's easy for quarterbacks to spot throw it so keep it simple stupid disguise your looks you can run cover for you can run, man, but don't put your guys in very unopportune situations just so you can hope that pressure gets home, especially on four-man pressure, Sarah. We've we've seen that. I know that's Vic Fangio's bread and butter, but sometimes if it's not working, you have to be more creative. You have to dial it up, but don't expose your hand here. Keep things simple, and especially when you have New starting linebacker, Sternot obviously has that experience, but he's still learning the playbook. You're going to more than likely have Micah Kaiser. You could have Curtis Robinson or Barrington Wade. You have to keep it simple for them because inside backers and Vic Fangio's defense are the most critical, in my opinion, for that success there for everybody else. So that's my key to victory. And Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Both Sarah and myself, we appreciate all you members all across Broncos country for your time and your interaction that you spend watching this show or listening to it on your favorite audio podcasting platform. Just a reminder, both Sarah and myself, we have you covered with the Thursday night football post-game recap immediately following the game here on the Lockdown Broncos YouTube channel where you can hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, or if you can't catch it immediately afterwards, you can catch us in the morning on your morning commute for your first listen of the day on the Lockdown Broncos podcast, free and available everywhere you get your podcast. Speaking from a good friend, Sarah Benninger, I'm Cody Work. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.